Something people, I mean, people always criticize Solinsky. He had a lot of great ideas. One of the things he talked about is pressure points. You have to put pressure. And, and with the videos that we do, they force a reaction. You gotta react. There's a teacher in New Jersey using the N word against students. That there has to be a reaction. So I think that you have to react. There has to be pressure applied to your subject. And I think that the other main thing is, as I alluded to before, is going after the media itself. Investigating the media itself, exposing the media itself. Not only have we done it indirectly, we've done it directly. And that really scares the establishment. The NPR story, the reason why it was so um, big, first of all, is because the media is vain. They like to cover themselves. If you want to get a story big, just do, you know, do it on the media. Uh, journalists have huge egos, and uh, they love to cover themselves, and love to cover each other. They gossip with each other about each other. So I think that indirectly and directly, the media has been our largest target, our most prolific target, and NPR. Going after the media, what is Project Veritas going to do in the future by, by nonprofit? We are going to make it a point to investigate the media. Guarantee it. I want to, you know how they said to catch a predator, the show to catch a predator? I want to make a show called To Catch a Journalist. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the, 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 here's a good example. Here's something easy you could do. Anyone in this room. This is what this is a good idea. Someone gave it to me on Twitter, actually. Go to the March for Life. How many people are at the March for Life? Does anyone know? Which one? Which one? I'm sorry, in DC. Yeah, 300,000. 300,000 people in the March for Life in DC. How many uh, pro or pro choice or uh, uh, pro abortion people are there? Maybe a dozen, maybe two hundred. Yeah. How many? Maybe. I always see two, a dozen people stand outside the uh, Supreme Court, right, with the big circle that says, "What is it?" Is the coat hanger. Coat hanger. Where do you think all the CNN reporters are? Right. They're always flustered around this group of six people with the big circles that say, "Like my right to choose." And there's 300,000 people passionately are, you know, on the lawn of the, of the mall. So I would love to get someone, one of these citizens here, to go up to one of those CNN reporters and you know, stalk them as they go back to their CNN vans and capture them on film talking about the need to get pictures of the six people. And then put that on YouTube. Make the media the story. That's right. Make the media the story. I mean, one can only imagine just sitting in their little CNN trucks outside the March for Life. We need to get the you know, the pro-choice people to know, or, or the New York Times editorial staff. We need, we need to protect Obama. Can you imagine if you got that on tape? You would completely discredit and delegitimize the mainstream media. And once you do that, um, you're really being a proponent of truth. Um, you're, so it is a people people conservatives. I, I actually don't refer to myself as a conservative. I call myself a progressive. People, how could you do such a thing? Well, because it really, I, I'm all about change. And the progressives are all about maintaining the status quo. We live in a time when, when things have been completely reversed. Mother Jones Magazine, who's familiar with Mother Jones? They're a, they're a um, 1960s counterculture, anti-government, used to be anti-government, not a big pro-government. Um, <laughs> they, they, they're, they're a 1960s magazine. They put me on the front cover last month. And they had like, you know, Pinocchio or something, but my face was transposed and my nose was really long. And, and they said, oh, Keith's a big liar. And they had this, they had 20,000 words or some ridiculous thing on me and my videos and how bad they are. This was a, a, a magazine that was devoted to investigating government and, and, and speaking truth to the man is now cooperating with the man and cooperating with government in order to investigate other young investigative journalists. It's just the paradigm has been completely shifted. And the, the left is now no longer the left. The left is pro-status quo. And, and the right, I don't even consider us right, I consider us grassroots agitators. We are kind of the new left. We're about speaking truth to the man, standing up to those in power, afflicting the comfortable. And um, it's, a new, it's a new model. My, my heroes are, are, please don't take this out of context, but. One of my, my one of the people I look up to is Saul Linsky. Um, no, no, conservative. He's immoral. He's unethical. He's evil. Read his book. A good tactic is one that your people enjoy. How is that immoral? That seems to me something that everyone should follow. Um, 
Another, ta another tactic Solinsky talks about is, is releasing the ammunition a little bit at a time. Um, if, but not for that tactic, the truth about Congressman Wiener would not have gotten out. So we, we have a lot to learn from, our, uh, from some of these people from the 1960s. Most of these people are, are, are pro-status quo, pro-establishment, pro-government, and it's time for us to, to, um, to, to abandon, our, I speak us because I'm speaking to you know, conservatives, abandon this, this notion that we are somehow meant to preserve tradition and preserve the status quo. There's nothing worth preserving anymore, okay? We have to fight, and our mission is, a, is one of, we have, it's, it's a mission to, to attack, it's a mission to expose, and once we do that, the truth will come out. Um, and I think that what, what's been so incredible about what we've done and what Christian has done is, is this, this um, I don't file FOIA requests. You're an investigative journalist. Yes, I'm an investigative journalist. I don't sit in a room with thousands of documents, a Sarah Palin emails. I don't go through 24,000 emails. I, I walk into a room and ask people a question. That's what I do for a living. No, also known as journalism. And it really just scoops the entire media. So um, that's it. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> I, I would love to hear what you have to say about this. Yes? Um, you know, when you, when you go out and you ask something, how do you, how do you think of those gotcha questions? I mean, and, and make it not sound like a gotcha question. Well, um, gotcha questions, I mean, what I, often t what I often do is something that, again, Alinsky talked about. I guess it's not just exclusive to Alinsky, but this notion of making them live up to their own book of rules. So a lot of people in this room included would probably go up to an acorn and say, how could you do voter fraud? And you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. And we need less of that. We need less political correctness in this country. That's what people say. We need people to be less. So I'm sensitive about everything. You know what I say? I need, we need more political correctness in this country. We need more sensitivity. That's why I'm going to go into my campus dining hall and attempt to ban Lucky Charms. <laughs> the breakfast cereal on the grounds it's racist. <laughs> why would I do that? Because I want to expose them by, by making them live up to their own book of rules. I want to take their logic and carry it to the extreme. By doing that, even people on their side will say, okay, we've, we've gone too far. I mean, when I did that, at my, I went to college at Rutgers. I graduated five years ago. And when I banned Lucky Charms from the campus because they were racist against Irish people, me being an Irishman, you know, I, what do I look like, a leprechaun? I'm 6'1". I mean, I'm, I'm not, my, my, my ancestors died in the potato famine. I mean, not exactly lucky. <laughs> and what I found was people on my campus who were politically correct and very sensitive, they malfunctioned after that. In other words, it's like break parts of last night when you pour water on a robot. Like, I did not compute. Like, they, they couldn't take the joke. Because by taking the joke, they admitted defeat. If, if, if they said, oh, that was a really good, that was a brilliant satire, they lose. So they actually went up to me and said, why do you think Lucky Charms are racist? I said, I don't. It's a, it's a joke meant to make fun of you. <laughs> but why, are, why did you ban them if they're not racist? Like, they couldn't understand. They couldn't, they forced themselves not to get the joke so they wouldn't lose the debate. So that's a long way of answering your question. The gotcha questions, you know, there's the gotcha questions like Christian Hartsock did in, in Southern California where he walked up to uh, the, Co the Code Pink protesters and said, what are we going to do with Clarence Thomas after we impeach him? That was brilliant. Because they're like, kill the bastard. But there's also the gotcha question, which is what I do.